What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how you can get faster without using any equipment. So I hope this video helps you guys out. I hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a quarterback or wide receiver and would like to train with us this offseason, we are coming out to six more states across the country for two-day-long QB and wide receiver camps. Next up on our camp tour, we'll be coming out to Cleveland, Ohio. That camp is completely sold out, but then we'll be heading out to Austin, Texas, Seattle, Washington, Newark, New Jersey, Jersey, Denver, Colorado, and Los Angeles, California. So if you guys would like some more information, how you can sign up and attend, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out there, fellas. Let's get started. So now when it comes down to speed, there's a lot of information out there about, you know, different exercises you can do in the gym, um, different resistance training, like running with a sled, running with a parachute. But what if you don't have that equipment? What if you don't have access to a gym? Can you still get faster? And yes, you 100% still can get faster. So the first thing I want to talk about today is running running form. So running form was one of those things when I played that I did not think was that important, right? I didn't think that, you know, running mechanics, I thought you just, you know, you try to run as hard as you can. You don't really pay attention to your mechanics. So especially when you're at a younger age, but working on your running mechanics can help you run more efficiently and efficiently is obviously a much faster way of doing things. So everybody can work on their running mechanics by simply running. That's just a hundred percent fact. If you've neglected running form and you're not a guy that thinks about your form and thinks about running the right way, you could get faster by simply just filming yourself and recording yourself running. Honest to God, you will get faster if you emphasize these mechanics that we're talking about here. So we're looking at DK Metcalf. This is one of his probably like most explosive plays where his speed was on full display, where he's chasing this guy down, hawks him all the way down, is able to make a pick. So let's look, let's talk about his running form here. And I guarantee you, he's not thinking about this right now. He has repped it out a million times. So let's start with the arms, right? Because I feel like the arms are the easiest spot to understand. A lot of wide receivers and a lot of quarterbacks, a lot of uh, every single position are a lot slower because when they run, they're not trying to drive with their arms. What they're doing is they think that their speed is going to come from how fast they can move their wrist, how fast you can move your hands, but in reality, it is about how powerful you can drive from your shoulder. The way I think of running mechanics is like your shoulder is one of those big like clocks, you know, like the ones that you've seen where they swing back and forth. That's how you want to think of your shoulder. You keep your arm at a 90 degree angle. It doesn't need to be like a perfect 90, but I would like you to try to be a perfect 90 and you drive from your shoulder straight forward and straight back because that creates power. When you drive from your shoulder and you pull your elbows back, if you will, that in at that 90 degree position that will help you with more forward speed forward momentum and ultimately just help you be a lot faster now when you are doing that pulling from your shoulders and pulling the elbow back your stride has to obviously be consistent so what do you mean by your stride when you guys are running you do never want to have like your stride be in this is in a position where you're not at 90 degrees where you're, maybe your toes pointed down your knee isn't getting up you should be driving your knee up almost even with your with your hip and you should be trying to keep your ankle flexed and when you strike the ground you are striking on the ball of your foot and exploding up so it's almost like you're sniffing snatching your knee up and snatching your toe up. But you'd notice the consistencies about being at a 90 degrees. You're at 90 with your arms, you're driving from the shoulder, and you almost want to think of it like your hand goes past your butt cheek all the way up to your face cheek. And then your knee and your toe are pretty much flexed and you're driving your knee up even with your hip. In a, in a basic terms, basic sense of things. If you are not thinking about that, you guys are obviously going to get a lot faster by simply just working on your mechanics. Now, what are some things you can do besides just running that will help you get faster? And that's what I want to talk to you about today as well. So a great example of running form. If you guys want to see more examples of running form, I highly recommend looking up any kind of track sprinter, anybody who runs a hundred meter, 200 meter, and just studying the way they run. Look at the way they strike the ground, their form, their arms, all of those things will help you get faster. No equipment necessary. So now what's Tyreek Hill doing here? This is a drill that he's doing. Um, and this is him just, you know, doing a simple track workout. This is like a version of like a, uh, a B skip, but I don't want to worry too much about a B skip. I just want to talk to you about what he's doing. Like before he does this kind of like bicycle kick movement, if you will. And he's doing something called a straight legged run, right? Where you're running and you're not bending your knees. You're keeping your legs straight. So how are you able to do a straight legged run and get something out of it speed wise? And that's by staying on the ball of your foot. The only way that you're going to be able to run while keeping that straight legged position like he has is by staying on the ball of his foot. This is working on his foot strike. Whenever he strikes the ground, his heel is not hitting the ground. He is staying on the ball of his foot because that's where that explosion and that correct stride length 
comes from. So fellas, something you guys can do, you don't have to do this type of an advanced drill. Maybe you just set up two, two cones, you get two landmarks, set them up 15 yards apart, and you do a straight-legged run where you're running out, you're just solely working on your foot strike. And the thing about speed well, a lot of people don't buy in because it, because in all the camps that we go to, we have a section of the camp where you work with a speed and agility coach. And it talks a lot about foot strike. We give you a lot about running form, um, a lot of drills that you guys can do. And some of it's boring. Some of it is very, very high repetition stuff that you're going to have to do over and over again in order for you to get better. But again, that's that's what playing the playing any position is. That's what football is. You do the stuff of do the boring stuff over and over again to get better. So a straight legged run is something that you could add to your routine that will help with that foot strike and will help you and it will honestly translate to your running form. No equipment needed for that either, by the way. So now this is an example of Tyreek Hill working on his arm drive. So what you do is you line up on a knee, and this is something that if, if I have a guy who struggles with speed, I'm mainly a receiver quarterback coach, but if I got a guy who struggles with speed, sometimes we will work speed and agility just, just to work on their overall athleticism because that can translate to a lot of aspects of the receiver position. So what he's doing is he's on one knee, his right knee is on the ground, his other knee is up, and all he is doing is swinging his arm arms and driving from his shoulders. So you see how his left knee or his right knee, excuse me, that's down is bouncing up and down when he does that, right? I know what happens this clip happens a little fast, but you see how the knee is bouncing up and down. That tells you that he is driving from his shoulders and pulling his elbow back. When you do a drill like this, if you're just moving your wrist and you're just breaking at your elbow, your knee is not going to bounce up and down. What guys will do though, when they do it correctly and they drive from their shoulders, that knee bounces up and down. That tells you that you have the correct upper half arm drive, and that's going to translate to more speed on the field. So that's another easy drill you can do. Another one that I've seen guys do that are similar is they sit down and do this. So they put their legs straight out in front of them. They sit down in like a 90 degree, and they drive their arms, and their butt pops up and down off the ground, and that tells you that you're doing it correctly. You're not just moving at your elbows. I highly recommend that you try this one. You could do this for like maybe a 20-second, 15-second timer and drive from those shoulders, have that knee bounce up and down, maybe put some padding on it, but it's a great drill that doesn't require any equipment to help you get faster. So I'm going to play this again one more time, and then we're going to get to another drill. So obviously, we talk a lot about, we talked about in the beginning of this video, how speed, there are a lot of different, you know, workouts you could do in the gym. You know, there are different explosive things that you could do that all help you activate something called fast twitch muscle fibers. So Everybody, I don't care what athlete you are, whether you're a soccer player or a football player, you have two types of muscle fibers. You have a fast twitch fiber and then you have a slow twitch fiber. So a fast twitch fiber is what football players want to use because everything that we do is full speed, you know, and you get time in between. You couldn't play a soccer game like you're running a route in, in football. Like, let's say you're a receiver and you're running like a comeback route. You're running full speed. You drop your hips. You get out of the break. You couldn't play soccer like that, constantly running full speed throughout the game. You'd die. You would kill yourself doing that. But in football, we get at least, you know, 10, 20 seconds in between each play to refuel so I could go out there and explode again, which is why speed is one of the most important things in football. Because it directly translates to what we have to do. We have to play fast. So doing exercises in the gym that will help you activate those fast twitch muscle fibers are important. So box jumps, power cleans, Olympic lifts, you know, doing exercise like what Tyree Kill is doing right now where he's doing like a... Uh, like a step up, right? Where he's stepping onto the box, snatching his knee up, simulating. Well, he's exploding off of one foot. Obviously, he's got some resistance. You don't need to do it with resistance. We're going to talk about why I'm showing this in a second. But snatching his knee up and trying to be explosive. Because that's what we need. We need that explosive burst. We need that fast twitch in order to be fast in general. Fast on the field, fast on a 40, whatever it is. So let's say, for example, you don't need equipment for this. You don't need a resistance band. You don't need a box. You could do this on your back porch. You could do this on a stool in your house. You put one foot on it. And as soon as that foot strikes, you explode up and you snatch the opposite knee up to your toe. They call this an explosive step up. So you step up onto the box and you snatch the knee and snatch the toe up. Again, you can get creative. You don't need equipment to do this kind of things. Because this is like a form of, I would say, like maybe a plyometric, you know, like an explosive training, like jump training, I guess you could say. Maybe not plyos, but like you could use plyos 
in your daily daily life, your house. Like you don't need a gym to be able to do these things. Like you got a back porch, do box jumps onto a back porch. If it's a small back porch, do single leg box jumps. You got a chair that's high enough in your house, do box jumps onto that. Like you have to find ways to be creative if you're gonna use that no equipment excuse. Or maybe you're on the younger side and you just are not ready to go to the gym yet, but you can do these types of things on your own to help you improve that specific speed. So again, great exercise that you can do. Now, is one last thing that I want to touch on because this is a heavily asked question is, okay, does a speed ladder or like an agility ladder like so help with speed? Now, they call it a speed ladder, but it's not going to help you with like spe- straightaway speed, I should say. It's going to help you indirectly. So I still think people will get benefit out of doing ladder work. I don't actually work ladders with any of my guys, unless they're on the younger side of things, right? Like we train athletes all the way from ages like eight to nine, all the way to college guys, right? So the younger kids will do ladders because it's great for athleticism. It's great for one specific thing towards speed, which is foot strike. So when you strike the ground, when you're running, what are you striking the ground on? The ball of your foot. You're not on your heel. You're not on your tippy toe. Similar to what Tyree Kill is doing here at the ladder. You see how he's striking each box? Where's he at? He's at the ball of his foot. He's tapping. He's on the ball of his foot. That's where you run, so you're working on that correct foot strike. A lot of young guys, when they do ladders, they're striking super flat-footed, etc. So let's say you're a wide receiver or a quarterback. I don't recommend adding ladders to your workouts. I recommend doing ladders maybe as like kind of a warm-up. You know, you go through a dynamic warm-up, you hop on the ladder real quick, but just know what you're getting out of it. It's not going to make you faster. It's going to get your foot strike correct. It's going to get you used to striking the ground, the ball of your foot, and it can be used as like kind of a good activation warm-up, but speed ladder is not going to get you faster. So if you're thinking as, oh, I'm going to do ladder drills, it's going to improve my speed, it probably won't, especially if you're doing a ladder drill that's like longer than three boxes because... It's just, it's just like, not, it's the work in the wrong type of muscle fiber. Like Tyree Kill right here, he's working on his foot strike, but this is not going to help him with speed because like, when are you ever making this many cuts back to back in a row? This is like working on your slow twitch fibers. This is why you see soccer players always doing those like obstacle course footwork drills because that translates more to their style of a game because it's a more slow twitch game, not knocking soccer. That's just, it is what it is. So for football players, I don't recommend using a ladder as a form of speed training. Use it for foot strike, use it for a warm up and that's what will get you the most out of it. So again, like in this video is about not having equipment. If you have a ladder and maybe you don't use a ladder, maybe you set up some cones. Again, you have to be creative. You could do this on a field. Honestly, you do this on a field, like with a white line, you just treat it like you're stepping over the white line, step back, use the white line as a ladder. You don't need a ladder to do these kinds of things. You don't need any equipment to do these kinds of things that we had mentioned that you wouldn't already have. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below always appreciate the feedback it's always great to hear from you guys and again fellas if you would like to come out to six of our off-season camps that we have remaining our cleveland and austin camp are completely sold out but we'll be coming out to seattle newark denver and los angeles check out that very first link in the description below we'd love to have you there i'll see you guys next time